Ever had this problem with your pool pump? We'll show you how to diagnose and fix this problem in today's video. Stay tuned. Now hearing what we just did, we know that there's power going to the pump. The pump is trying to turn on, um, but there's something preventing it from running. So my suspicion is that there is debris from the pool stuck in the impeller in the pump itself, in the, in the pump housing. Safety first. So we'll shut off the power. And with the power turned off to the pump, we can now be uh, safe in putting our hands into the pump um, and feeling if there's any debris in the impeller. So you want to put your hand in and you can feel into the, toward the, uh, the actual motor and you can feel the impeller. Let me grab the camera, explain what I mean here. So I'm taking a screwdriver, I'm coming into the housing, turning it, and I'm going into the pipe to see if I can clear any debris out from the impeller itself. And typically if there's debris in here, you'll be able to feel it. You'll be able to feel the, I can feel the impeller turning. That's a good sign. So the impeller's not completely stuck. And generally if there's debris, you can remove it with a screwdriver. And you would feel it coming out. You'd have all kinds of debris coming out in the water. I don't actually feel anything. So the impeller's turning freely. So on to step two. So now we're at the back of the pump motor and you'll see that the pump motor is bolted to the pump housing itself using some bolts going all around uh, the pump. And yours should be very similar. And typically what you wanna do to get these uh, pump motors off so you can kind of go in there and inspect the impeller is just, just back out these uh, these bolts, they're going to be quite long, and you'll be able to slide this motor out along the little frame that it sits on here. Slide the motor out, and that will give you access to the impeller to see if there's anything wrong mechanically uh, with the impeller. Maybe, you know, it's been spinning freely as I put my hand in there and can spin it. i put the screwdriver in and spin it, but perhaps there's something broken on the motor itself that's not turning the impeller and that's why we don't have um, any 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 flow off or the pump motor rather off of the pump housing it's a little warm still just trying to start. There we go. There goes the water. I'm bring the camera back over here and show you what I mean by pulling this out and inspecting the impeller. So there we go. This gives us access to the impeller here. This gives us access to the impeller here. So we can see uh, the housing and the o-ring that goes on to the pump assembly. There's an o-ring that goes around obviously the casing as well. So when you unbolt the casing you'll have uh, an o-ring around there as well. Now we'll need to get this off and I think that's just a couple of screws here. So there we go. Now that housing is off. And that gets us access to the actual impeller itself. This is the impeller. You can see it turns. This is a silicone, oh, it's a plastic ring that goes on there and allows it to rest against the housing here. Um, and so that the, the impeller can spin. Now I don't see any damage with the impeller. I've also replaced just impellers before. Um, sometimes these impellers uh, will wear and you won't be able to, um, you know, they won't be able to, to push water or they won't be able to spin or the, the, you know, the, 
the pump motor itself won't spin the impeller. Now when we talk about debris in the impeller, this is what we mean. So we can get a shot in here. You'll see that there's some debris in the impeller that comes out. And sometimes this gets completely clogged with debris. Um, if you, you, know, you haven't cleaned your pool enough, you can really pick some debris out of here. And this will actually prevent water from turning, you know, water from being pushed through the system. This impeller looks okay. So because everything seems to be spinning freely, the shaft inside the electric motor is turning and the impeller is turning freely. Um, there doesn't seem to be anything, anything mechanical going on between the electric motor and the impeller. Um, so I'm going to put it back together, see if it kicks in. So the problem may be this capacitor. And um, so what I'll do is I'll take this cover off again. The capacitor is generally found under a hump on the motor like this. It could be here or it could be at the end uh, under the, the end cap here. So under this cover, you'll see a piece of foam, piece of plastic, and that covers this capacitor. Um, and sometimes these things just uh, die out and you know we'll leave some some fluid and they just need to be replaced now the right way to replace this is to uh, do a couple things first first make sure the power is turned off we just did that I'm gonna wear some gloves and I, I know that may sound extreme um, but capacitors have been known to pop uh, when they're bad, uh, when you're trying to re trying to replace them, and we don't want that to happen. So, uh, what what uh, most experts will tell you to do is to cover the capacitor with a couple of cloths. Hopefully, you can see that still. There we go. And on the end of the capacitor are two terminals. Here are the two terminals. And what you want to do is you want to dissipate any charge that's left remaining in the capacitor. And to do that, you're going to touch a uh, screwdriver across both of these terminals to, you know, get rid of any any excess charge. Sometimes it'll send a little couple little sparks out, um, and sometimes these things will pop. So if you cover it with a with some cloths, just wear some gloves, touch it, it'll get rid of the the, the additional um, charge remaining in the in the capacitor. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, this capacitor uh, is rated for uh, 30 UF here, you'll see. And uh, it's a 50, 60 hertz, uh, 370 VAC. So those are the kinds of numbers you need to kind of uh, pay attention to when you replace a capacitor. Uh, my understanding is that you should never uh, replace it with a capacitor of a lower rating. Only go higher and only slightly higher. Now, I've replaced this before with the exact same size capacitor uh, and rating. Uh, this is the one I could get my hands on uh, the quickest this time, so it's slightly higher rating. It's 35 UF, but again, the same 370 uh, VAC, so I should be all right. So we simply take that out of the box. Slightly larger, as you'll see. It's got three terminals. Okay, I've now turned the power back on and um, we're going to test this out to see if the start capacitor here that we just replaced was the problem. We'll see if the, uh, the electric motor will start up and continue running. Now you may have seen that um, I replaced the two terminal capacitor that was in here with a three terminal capacitor. Um, and that's okay to do as long as you've got the right size, the right, uh, you know, the right, the right, the right um, specification of capacitor. Um, so a three terminal capacitor is really just called a dual round capacitor. 
And what that means is it's typically for an HVAC system, kind of an air conditioning uh, compressor and fan motors. Um, so what, what, a, what a dual round capacitor uh, is, it's really actually two capacitors in one, uh, in one body. Um, so the engineers will put two capacitors in one body uh, to allow both the compressor and the fan for an HVAC system to run. Uh, so what I did here was I put that capacitor in and I used one of the terminals, the compressor terminal, uh, with a what's called a common uh, terminal. So uh, you know, I used two, two, two of the two of the three terminals. I could have used the compressor with a common or the fan with the common. So basically, I've got two capacitors in one now. Uh, so in theory, if one of the capacitors uh, ever dies, I could just switch terminals and um, and have another capacitor. Uh, so we'll see if replacing that was the problem, and uh, see if the engine with the electric motor starts up and allows the pump to run. Now I've got the, t the power turned back on. Let's go, let's see. The motor started. And we've got full pressure now in the pump. It seems to be continuing to run, so I think we're good. Uh, so that was it, guys. It was just a, an $11 capacitor um, you know, to be replaced instead of buying a new $300 to $400 pump motor. Okay, so if you uh, found this video helpful, please like and please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks a lot.